welcome to the Norwood Innovation Lab. Coming to you from Mr. and Mrs. Dykes' domicile. I am Mrs. Dykes. This is... Mr. Dykes. And these are our two daughters. Cheerio, play. Lily Dykes. And they are going to be helping us along the way. So why are we doing this? Well, as all of you know, we're stuck at home, unable to leave the house or go to school. So we wanted to make sure that all of our students still had the best access to fun projects with things they can use at home. Because we miss you because we're constantly stuck with them now. Wouldn't you say so, Mr. Dykes? Absolutely. Mr. Dykes, what would you say about our attire today? Well, I would say that this is how we generally dress when we're at home, not at school, teaching all of you. You may be surprised to find out that Mr. Dykes has such fine tailored clothes. This vest even has thumb pockets. Mine fur has hand pockets. Hand it's important pockets. to be able to keep your hands warm. Daddy, what would you say about hands? Hands? Reminds me of today's video sponsor. Today's video brought to you by... Wash, wash your, your hands. hands! Because right now, it's really important to remember to wash, wash your, your hands. hands. There's a lot of sicknesses going around right now, and the best way, one of the best ways, to protect yourself is to wash, wash your hands. hands. When washing your hands, be sure to remember to wash them for at least 30 seconds. Lily, how long is about 30 seconds? Sing the ABC songs two times. Sing the ABCs two times. But maybe you don't like the ABC song. Pick any song you like, which is about 30 seconds. Personally, Mr. Dykes likes the best song ever written, Stairway to Heaven. I'll sing the last verse. It goes something like this. And as she winds on no! the Well, <laughs> just remember, Gosh, wash your no hands. hands. As we get ready to go on our STEM journey, you're probably going to need a couple items from home. All of the projects we've tried to plan have to do with things you should already have. Things like cereal boxes, granola bar boxes, maybe a little bit of string, if you have a balloon or two lying around, and straws. We don't want anybody going out to have to buy anything, so every project has lots of different alternatives to make sure you can do it successfully at home. We're excited to get started. We hope you are too. Our first STEM project for the Norwood Innovation Lab is going to be to make a hybrid animal. Where did we get this idea? Well, we've been playing a lot of this game, Baz Buzz Babies, while we're stuck at home. Girls, do you like this game? Yeah. It's incredible. Good. Well, in this game, you mix two animals, for example, a bald eagle and a Pomeranian, and then they battle other hybrid animals to try to win babies. Of course, our project is going to have a little bit more of a scientific, school-based approach. Mr. Dykes, can you tell us a little bit about our project? Certainly. For this project, you will need to select two real animals that are going to be hybridized. They're going to have a baby. What will their baby look like? You're going to tell us. For this project, you will need to make sure that you select two real animals. Please, no fairy tale animals, no extinct animals, no humans, and unfortunately, no superheroes. Although Mr. Dykes really didn't want to see a Hulk caterpillar. For the project, you'll need to do a little bit of research about both of your real animals. Find out some basic details. Where does it live? What does it eat? What eats it? Once you've gotten some research done about your real animals, you'll take that information to inform some facts about your hybridized animal. I have to tell you about my animal hybrid. I decided to mix my two very favorite animals, the sloth and the shark, and I named it the Sloth. Now, I made my animal in three different ways because not everybody has access to the same materials. The first one I made was with Legos. You can see the Sloth body, the shark head. It was really difficult to make this and find all the pieces, and I still don't know if it looks exactly like a shark and a sloth. Next, I tried my hand at sculpting with Play-Doh. As you can see, I did better with Legos. The shark head, you can see it's a shark because of the fin and the teeth, but that's about it. And then this blobby part is supposed to be the sloth's body. Finally, if you don't have Legos or Play-Doh, no big deal. There's all kinds of things you can do on paper. 
I chose to cut a sloth out of a magazine, hoping it would look better than my other two. And then I made a shocked head because I couldn't find one in the magazine. I guess they're not as popular. So you could do it this way. You could draw the whole thing, or you could even print it on a computer or do a digital drawing on your phone or iPad. Next came the research part. I had to come up with an animal common name. An animal common name is what everyday people like you and I call an animal. And I decided on sloth. The SL comes from the sloth, the ARK comes from the shark. Next, I had to come up with an animal scientific name. What's a scientific name? Well, a scientific name is a name that usually sounds funny and only scientists use because they had to have a name that all of them would understand. For example, do you know the difference between a cougar, a puma, and a mountain lion? Well, no, because there is no difference. They're all the exact same animal, just different people in different areas call them the different things. So, animal scientific names are written in Latin. Why did they choose Latin? Well, it's a dead language, and when they all got together and tried to come up with a name, well, they figured everybody started fighting. The Germans wanted to name it after the German language, the Italians wanted to name it after the Italian language, the Americans wanted them all to have English names. So they came up with a language nobody spoke anymore so that nobody could fight, Latin. So the shark's Latin name is heterodontus and the sloth's Latin name is folivora. So my animal scientific name is heterodontus folivora. Next, I had to think about the habitat or the shelter of my animal. Well, my animal's mainly a sloth and I decided its body couldn't survive in the ocean like a shark. So I decided it would live in the sloth's rainforest of Costa Rica, up high in the trees. Next, a shark is a carnivore, but a sloth is an herbivore. So I decided my animal needed to be able to eat mostly plants and meat. So it would be an omnivore, mainly eating fish, fruits, and berries. The predator of the sloth is a jaguar. The shark doesn't really have a lot of natural predators. It's at the top of the food chain. So I decided my animal's still probably pretty slow with that sloth body. Jaguars would probably still be in danger. Would my animal be cold-blooded or warm-blooded? Well, the shark is cold-blooded, the sloth is warm-blooded, and again, it's mostly sloth in the body, so I figured it would need to be warm-blooded to live in the rainforest. Finally, what type of babies does my animal have? Is it going to have babies that come in eggs or is it going to be a live baby? And I decided again, the sloth wins out. It would have live babies because it's mainly a sloth. And this, my students, is a sloth. Mr. Dykes is going to tell you about his animal next. I think you should get next. Good morning, Norma students. Mr. Dykes coming to you here from Dykes Laboratories. Today I'm going to introduce you to my hybridized animal. My hybridized animal's name is the flamingodile. How do you make a flamingodile, you ask? Quite simple. You take the body of a flamingo and you attach the head of a crocodile. That's ridiculous, you may think. How could a full-grown flamingo's body and neck support the head of a full-grown crocodile? It couldn't. Which is why the flamingodile has the body of a full-grown flamingo but the head of a baby crocodile. It looks something like this in the wild. The flamingodile's scientific name is Crocodilus ruber. It lives in the Florida Everglades where it builds nests on the ground. Both flamingos and crocodiles eat fish, so this was pretty easy. My animal, the flamingodile, eats fish. Predators. What would eat a flamingodile? Well, until recently, the flamingodile had no natural predators, but humans brought some in. There was an invasive species in the Florida Everglades known as the Burmese python. And the Burmese python has been devastating the populations of flamingodiles recently. Those of you in the fifth or sixth grade should know what an invasive species is. This is what teachers like to call review. My animal is warm-blooded, but I had to make a choice here. It was kind of hard. Flamingos being birds are warm-blooded. Crocodiles being reptiles are cold-blooded. It's mostly flamingos, so I said warm-blooded. Maybe you're asking, 
what does cold-blooded, what does warm-blooded mean? Quite simple. The fish behind me are cold-blooded. And this means that their body's temperature is the same temperature as their environment, the water. My water is 78.2 degrees, therefore my fish's body, 78.2 degrees. I, on the other hand, am warm-blooded because I'm a mammal. Warm-blooded means your body's almost always the same temperature, irregardless of your environment. My body temperature is usually around 97 degrees. If I'm in a warm place, a cold place, it doesn't matter. Last, does my animal have eggs or live babies? Flamingos lay eggs, crocodiles lay eggs, so this was easy. The flamingo dial lays I had to model my animal. I started with Legos, and I'm not gonna lie, I love how it turned out. The flamingo dial. Now you may notice, if you look carefully, that the flamingo dial has a few odd characteristics. Namely, it has gold teeth. How would a flamingo dial in the wild get gold teeth? It's not like crocodiles have dentists. Well, in the wild there is an animal that acts a lot like a dentist for a crocodile. It cleans their teeth. This is an example of a symbiotic, mutualistic relationship. Those of you in the fifth or sixth grade should know the name of the animal that has a symbiotic, mutualistic relationship with the crocodile. In the comments below, tell me the name of that animal if you remember. Second, I decided to model my animal with drawing. So Mr. Dykes drew this amazing drawing. All of you in my classes will know I'm a phenomenal artist, and I'm certain that none of you, having seen the drawings that I commonly do on the board, will question in any way that I drew this. Third, we decided to model it out of Play-Doh. This is the flamenco dial that I made with Play-Doh. And let's be honest, it could look better. Hey, well, my name is Claire Dykes, and I'm here telling you about the Zyno. A Zyno? How do you make a Zyno? You make a zebra and a rhino. You have a zebra body and a rhino head. Can you show us your model that you made there? What did you make your model out of? Legos. And did it take you a while to make that, or was it pretty easy? It took me a while, and at some point I had to kind of modify. On the side, you will notice there's these weird hangers. Mm. And okay. I couldn't find any other two pieces that are gray. So you had to modify the so design. So I had to kind of modify a little bit. And did you get the idea for this out of your head, or did you have any other resources? I had a resource called a Build-It Book. Oh, very nice. And in that book, are there models of different things you can build? Animals yes. and whatnot? Very nice. Animals, houses, cars. Excellent. What is your animal's scientific name? An equisimum. And where would I find a zyno if I were looking for one? The African Serengeti. And why did you select that? Because both animals live in the African Serengeti. Very nice. And, and what sorts of things would a zyno eat in the wild? It's a herbivore, so it and it prefers plants. It prefers flowers. What does herbivore mean? A herbivore means it only eats plants. Very nice. Does the zyno have any natural predators? The one predator it has is human. Why would humans want to kill out a zyno? Because they want their horns. People sometimes think that their horns are magical, and so they'll poach or hunt for them, and then they'll take the horn. And they shouldn't do this, correct? And they cannot do that. And they'll sell them for money, and they could get really famous. They not get famous, but really rich. Sure. And um, has this been happening to rhinos recently? Yes, and one species only has one or two left. And I think it's the white or the black rhino. Very nice. Um, the zyno, is it warm-blooded or cold-blooded? Inquiring is, minds want to know. It is a warm-blooded animal because both animals are warm-blooded, which also means it's a mammal. Very good. Um, 
Does it have live young, live babies, or eggs? It has live babies. Excellent. Did you model your Zino in any other way than Legos? I drew a picture, as you can see on the side. Very nice. Well, thank you so much for sharing the Zino with us. And I did not have time for Play-Doh because my mom used all the white of. <laughs> Mom's the worst. The next hybrid animal we have to learn about is from Lily and Dice. Lily, please tell us about your new animal that you've invented. I made a giraffe. It is a giraffe and a elephant. Oh, what is your animal's scientific name? A giraffe. A giraffe in a lox A giraffe a that's a mouthful. What is your animal's habitat? African Serengeti. Ooh, why did you choose the African Serengeti for because, the giraffe fit? Because they both live in the African Serengeti. Oh, um, what is the diet or what does your animal eat? Herbivore tree leaves. Tree leaves? Do you think they're high tree leaves or low tree leaves? High. Uh, why do you think they would be high tree leaves? Because, it, because it's very tall. It's very tall, that is right. What is your animal's predators? Or what eats your animal? Their predators because it is so strong and big. So strong and big. Oh, is your animal cold-blooded or warm-blooded? Warm-blooded, because they are both warm-blooded. Oh, okay, easy choice then. Does your animal lay eggs or have live babies they have live babies because they both have live babies okay and i see some stuff on the table here lillian did you make all this stuff yes my first is a lego masterpiece this is the giraffe part and this oh, his is his nose fell off that's okay we'll just pop it right back on this is the elephant part oh that is very impressive did that take you a long time to build yes did anybody help you Yes, my dad did. I think that's okay. That's a really nice masterpiece. And I did use a book to also help me. It was a Build It book. Oh, nice. Nice, nice. I bet you could find images online of how to make animals if you needed to, if you don't have the old Build It book. What about this wonderful leg or sculpture? Um, I, it did not come out how, how I thought it would. We mixed white and blue here, and we just put yellow here with orange dots. For spots like the giraffe. And what about this picture? So this is the head, this is the body, and this is the water coming out. Well done. Well, I wish giraffes really existed. I think they would be an amazing creature. Thank you so much for your hybrid animal. You're welcome. hybrid animals to the next level, a good way to do that is with stuffed animals. We're going to take what once was a pig and put it with a kangaroo. This requires adult supervision. We're going to start by finding the seam on the kangaroo and having your parents or a grown-up cut the head off. It's not a very good day, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the kangaroo lost its head. I'm gonna set that aside, and I'm gonna take the pig head and take some of the stuffing out. And today what we're going to do, you're gonna have to kind of tighten it up to fill it in on the same spot. We are going to do a whip stitch. I'm gonna take Whips. my thread, just put it through my needle. Sure, yeah, you can pick whatever you want. So I threaded the needle. <laughs> and I'm going to tie it off in a knot. So that the thread doesn't just go through the animal. Which side are you tying the knot? The end or the side near the needle? The end. You don't want to tie the side near the needle. Well, so it hurts. And how many knots are you doing? 
Um, my first knot didn't go very well, so you have to do two knots in a row. So I did three, but you would only need to do two. So I'm going to start with the back so that if there's mistakes made, nobody can see them. One more and then we're gonna tie off our new hybrid animal. So here you can see it. You have a pig on top of a kangaroo. And now we're gonna knot, we're gonna take the needle and make a circle and pull the needle through. Also known as a kangaroo. And we're gonna do that two or three times. Then we're gonna cut it. And we're all done. <laughs> world kangaroo thank you for joining us at the innovation lab in mr and mrs dyke's laboratory we hope you enjoyed seeing our animals and the different research we've done in the creation of them we look forward to seeing your animals in the comment section below you can post a short video or a photograph with the research you've done in a picture Please remember that we're new to this, so there might be some time delays or glitches in getting all the comments approved. Also, remember, we're always kind in comments, because otherwise, if we're unkind, we might just have to shut the whole thing down. Also, a reminder that you can get lunch at school, any of the Norwood schools, from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock, and you can also pick up some extra work, some packet stuff that will help you with your learning while we're not meeting in class. One last reminder, today's video sponsor was Wash Yo Hands. For at least 30 seconds, and lunches start on Tuesday at 11. Thank you so much, and we hope you'll join us tomorrow for St. Patrick's Day, where we'll be doing leprechaun tracks.